On today's show, it's a L.A. letdown for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Another bad performance, another disappointing loss. Where does this team even go from here? We'll talk about that and more on a new Locked on Cavs. You are Locked on Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Welcome into Locked On Cavs. I'm Chris Manning. That's Evan Damerel. I'm doing the behind the scenes stuff today. Jake Stevens has a day off to to do what Jake Stevens does out in the world, which is like wear black hoodies and do music stuff. <laughs> Cavs Lakers. Evan, a like we're not even we're not even going to talk about LeBron, but another cat. LeBron, one of the you know we're running towards the end of LeBron's career. Obviously, one of the last times you'll kind of see this, but for the Cavs in this current moment, for them. A disappointing loss is the way I think you'd put it for a team that, with four games to go, is backpedaling, it feels like, into the playoffs. This was another bad performance, another disappointing performance where very little felt like it actually went correct. Uh, Yeah, back backpedaling or limping, depending on how you really feel about like they're, they're, I think the like cramping, like there, there's some kind of metaphor we could find I here that it's cr- backpedaling or I, I'd say limping just because of the state of Donovan Mitchell and hobbling, the, hobbling. Yeah. Hobbling will go that that's a good crossover of, you know, the great thought exercise at locked on cast. If you guys were screaming the answer immediately, thank you for somehow, you know, in the future, manifesting that idea into chris's head but yeah they are hobbling towards the finish line um they do have a second game against the clippers immediately after this one so we'll see how they respond you'd assume donovan mitchell's not playing in that game just because of how the Cavs are handling his knee situation i mean frankly i'd be stunned um if he was playing but also stranger things have happened too maybe the Cavs just try to really force the situation or maybe mitchell does as well but yeah they're just they're in disarray this is the third loss on this road trip with the the game against the jazz a very bad basketball team that the Cavs took care of business with against um like being their lone win but like the suns they were blitzed from the perimeter and just careless of the basketball the nuggets they were blitzed with a capital b from the perimeter and careless of the basketball and the lakers Guess what, folks? They were blitzed from the perimeter thanks to former Cavalier Torian Prince and uh, careless of the basketball, tying the second most turnovers in a single game this season. And yeah, there's just not a lot of reason for optimism, I'd say, right now, just because they are hobbling into the playoffs. I think maybe licking their wounds a little bit, but they are not the same team they were to start the season or at least just even th- during some high points. Uh, after the all-star break, which has been pretty overwhelmingly blech for the most part. Looking in general to at the flow of this game, right? 33 points in the first quarter to 36 to 33 Lakers win in quarter one. Okay. Cavs go down to 23 in quarter two. They go down to 22 points in quarter three. The Lakers dip as well, but they're, they're pulling away. And then the Cavs get a whopping 19 points in the fourth quarter. Cleveland shoots one of eight from three in the fourth, seven of 18 from the field. The only Cavs player to take more than two shots and, and be above 500 from the field in that quarter is Karras Rogers, three of three, of three. Darius Garland and Evan Mo and, and Donovan Mitchell, excuse me, combined two of 11 from the field in the, in the final quarter, including 0 of five from three, zero free throws for Cleveland in that quarter. Nothing for them. Like it starts okay early. Like it's close. You're you're looking at how Darius is playing and Jared's getting to the rim and Evan Mobley to hit the three and all this stuff. And you're like, great. There there's something kind of working today, even if Donovan is you know not at his best. Mm-hmm. And then it just cascades into a lot of blah. And 
Evan, I think you're you're right in shouting out that it's looked in some ways different every game. Like it, the end result has been somewhat similar, but there's little nuances you could look at. I can't like I every Cavs game right now. If you're us recording about this after the game, if you're fans watching invested, if you're the team, we're ending up in the same place over and over and over again, and it's just a bunch of blah. Yeah, um, it's kind of like a how did we get here situation where there is common themes about a different result and just actions and consequences from those actions. And in this game, like against the Lakers, at least just because against the Suns, Donovan Mitchell, I think had a pretty strong performance. It seemed like he was kind of progressing, at least based on the eye test of where his knee was at. This felt like a step back for him where he just seemed like he was out of sorts. He seems like he was pressing a lot of his shot attempts. I feel like, in my heart of hearts, it, it, it's probably for the best if he just shut it down just because, like, you don't want him to alter his career or just, like, you know, impact things. But, like, he was a net negative for the Cavs when he was on the floor. And then the inverse of it, which, again, an inverse from the Suns game, Darius Garland was really good in this game, um, scoring wise, at least. Like, maybe moving the rocket was a little bit more apparent in the second half. But, like, Garland had a pulse. He was trying to get the Cavs in or keep the Cavs in this game and keep them flowing. And,. It's just they can't seem to find like these high points in these losses and connect the common threads together to let that result in like an actual win for them. And that is the frustrating thing for me. Just like watching them is like I I can't figure out why they are so inconsistent across the Rubicon. Like it's just like a guy stands out up and then like two guys are kind of bleh like and in this game against the lakers it was mitchell for sure then evan mobley as well who was very much not present in this matchup i don't even understand if you are them if you are a fan like who might if you're us i don't know what you can even say this team is like hanging its head on right now like the lakers you know they're 45 and 33 they're in the plane in the west like they're you know they're one game worse than the Cavs record wise but you know the west is much more competitive all that stuff so they're mm-hmm. further back i at least understand like what their style is i don't i look i understand what the nick style is or like the magic style is I don't know what the Cavs' style is right now. And then you look at also just like what is opportunity-wise there for him. And like there's a window here for the Cavs to not only just secure three, but because of the how uneven the Bucks are playing, you have like a window to maybe push to try to just fall back into that. That team has lost three in a row. I mean, you now have as well. They've lost two in a row and could be, be three losers on Sunday. Like you have this window here. And you just don't have any means to like take it. It's just like I I don't I just, I I don't know is not good podcasting for us or like doing YouTube, but Correct. I don't know. But I just it, it's just it, when I look, the, it, it's just like a bunch what, of like I don't do know, know what this doesn't, is. What we do know is that this does not equate to what we know versus what we're seeing on the court currently and like you said i think the lack of identity is i think that is that that is what i do know like they they are struggling to have an identity on the court like in years past or even when they've been banged up last season or this season a lot of it is leaning on the defense and letting that dictate the flow of the game and then taking advantage of second chance opportunities or just like you know crashing the glass and snagging a defensive rebound and getting out in transition um and then just uh, burning an opposing defense because now you have the shooters and like guys like max Struess or george niang or dean wade when he was healthy but they are not good defensively right now either i i think heading into this matchup they were the third worst three-point defense team heading in the in the league and defensive rating wise i think they are below average i think they are in the 20s in terms of just like overall rating and so like they don't have the ability to hang their hat on their defense and sure not having isaac Okora out there certainly hurts not having dean wade out there certainly hurts but you at least have your core tent poles in evan mobley and jared allen to lean on it just it's not collectively clicking and so it's just it feels like a lot of you know like square peg round hole stuff where Maybe they're trying to force things and find that identity again, but it is resulting in some pretty just 
uneven, ugly basketball, and then also it's just leading to losses upon losses where you and I are just kind of left looking for answers that may not be easily accessible because we're not flies in the wall in that locker room. And I don't think they have answers, though, is the thing. That's the, I think if they the did, we would have like like yeah. To quote you, inject truth serum, I, I don't know if they'd have like an honest answer either. They'd just kind of go and shrug. It's bizarre. The last here's the here's the last. I'm gonna count this back four, five, six. I'm making sure I got the last ten. This is going back to March twentieth. So here's our last ten games. Just want to read these results and it's because this is it tells it tells me something looking at this. Lost to Miami, lost at Minnesota, lost at Miami, beat Charlotte, lost Charlotte. Losing to Charlotte, by the way, who should be relegated. Like what are we doing here? That's maybe when the season was officially just kind of like marked for doom. You lose to Charlotte. Um, Could be. Beat Philadelphia. Lost to Denver. Beat the Jazz. Got beat by Phoenix. And got beat by the Lakers. Like, that's three. You had a three-game losing streak in there. You had a loss to the Hornets. And you had losses, at least record-wise, to two teams in the West that are kind of ostensibly on your level. Every every indicator of this recent run, Evan, just I think tell like if I know anything, it's that this is all of this is trending in the wrong direction, and that's a very ominous place to be. All right, after this, speaking of like what may might be the root cause of this, Donovan Mitchell uh, still not playing that well, despite what he said the other day, and and we talked about that on our previous show. So, how did he look into Lakers, and also how did Darius Garland look? That's coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off the month of April. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both for both men and women's college basketball. Get in on the playoff action. Win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take in any game to a new basketball during basketball postseason. NBA playoffs begin April 20th, and the playing around be- starts April 16th, runs through the 19th. You can now own up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. So you can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And if you want to, play alongside some of Prize Pick favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley. You can now find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Download the app today. Use our code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $1,000. Again, that is prizepicks.com. Download their app. Use the code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy so Evan what did you think of Donovan Mitchell and how he played against the Lakers his stat line for those who didn't see this or or just tuned to watch the game without looking 38 minutes 4 of 13 from the field 2 of 9 from 3 0 of 2 from the line 7 assists 5 turnovers if you didn't mention the turnovers the 7 assists are encouraging but this was, I, I, I kind of alluded to this in the first segment, but it felt like a case of one step forward, like against the Suns, and then two steps back against the Lakers, where he was pressing quite a bit. I think just the, you know the fact that he kept hoisting up the basketball. Sure, you're trying to play through an injury and figure out like what you know what your body is capable of physically, uh, despite maybe him saying like he's fine in terms of his knee, but whatever. Um, he pressed quite a bit. I think that certainly played a part in just like, you know, wasted opportunities for Cleveland in this game, but the seven turnovers like that, that's brutal. Um, that is doing the math about 35% of Cleveland's total turnovers in this game, which resulted in 26 points. Like the total turnovers, the Cavs had gave it 19 turnovers led to 26 points for the Lakers. Like Mitchell was a key part in that. I think he pressed quite a bit. I think, you know, he was maybe physically trying to figure himself out, but, these are games where you really can't afford to do that. And I think that's the really the precariousness of the situation for Cleveland and just Mitchell in general is like, they can't afford to like let him kind of find his shot and his rhythm again. And so now we're just kind of sitting here like, okay, this is a little ugly, but yeah, uh, not great. I think I was what I'd say overall, but what, what are your feelings on Donovan's? I just, game against the Lakers. I don't believe that he is like, 
So the other day we went through his quotes about how he feels like he's getting back to being himself and, and getting there, right? And I'll mm-hmm. be right by the place. I just don't think I can believe that that's going to be true. I don't think I believe that that is possible in the way it needs to be for it to matter. He does not have the burst to beat guys off the dribble. He does not have the rhythm and that I think he lost by being out on top of this team just not having any rhythm. I just don't believe that the Mitchell they would need, the level he would need to get to for it to really matter this season is possible for him to get to anymore. It feels like he just needs time to get healthy fully in the offseason. Would need an extended time off. Like, if this injury had happened in October, it wouldn't have been good, but at least he could have maybe, like, taken time off and been like, all right, I'll be great in a month, right? I'll be fine in six weeks, whatever it is, and be cool. Now it's like, well, the playoffs are in 14 days. I guess I got to play to try to get to the rhythm, even if I know I'm not going to be right. I just, I don't. I look at games like this, Evan, I just don't believe that it's possible he's going to get to where he needs to be. It just doesn't feel like it's just, it's even in the cards for him. No. And you and I kind of talked about this heading into this episode. Um, It would be in Mitchell and I believe the team's best interest for him to shut it down just like completely until you know he's 100%. But I just don't think that also like I understand the... the the gravity of the situation where Cleveland is reeling quite a bit and um, they do need Mitchell to step up and be the guy that saves them. But like Mitchell just physically isn't capable to do it. And like, you know, it'd be in the best interest of him and the team probably to shut it down just because like he was a net negative on the floor for the Cavs against the Lakers. And I I doubt he plays against the Clippers, but he was uh, not great. And like I said, like was a key part in why the Cavs were, one turning over the basketball so much and two like just being careless overall against a Lakers team that is trying to play to avoid the play in tournament. Like it's not like they're playing like a Lakers team that has the season locked up or it, whether it's the draft or the, the, the playoffs, like the Lakers are trying to win these games at the end of the season, just because they want to avoid the play in and maybe make the playoffs instead. So it's just, it, it's tough. And I, I think that's just the most frustrating thing is like, I think Mitchell physically thinks he's okay, but like the mind may tell the body one thing and the body is just going to tell the mind that no, he's not ready. And I think that they may need to like rest him. I mean, for as long I, as they can. I also think it's wonder. It's like, it does. It, I wonder if he knows he's not ready physically, but it's like a mental obligation and him as a competitor, which you have to admire that makes yeah. him push through this. Like, I think it's possible. He knows he's not like fully right. And is trying to just like work himself into his shoots. So he believes it. Uh, the other guy I have an under scrutiny here, I guess of how he's played of late is Darius Garland. 11 to 25 from the field for him after uh Brian Windhorst ethered him the other day on the hoop collective. Yeah. Um, well, the, there's the, more to the, say. The, bull, the bull, bull shout, you know, just like, and you're like, k- k- all right, this one's done. Yeah, it's, it's a little tough. Uh, Darius Garland, 11 to 25 from the field, four of nine from three, two assists, five steals, one turnover, a team high 26 points. I, it's, I, this is a weird Garland game to me, Evan, because yeah. the aggression is there and he takes nine threes and he shoots 25 times. Obviously, just if Mitchell can't or won't or whatever, he kind of needs to, so that's good. But then he also only gets two assists and wasn't really the passer that we kind of know him to be as Darius Garland at times. So uh, even if there's positives, it remains like a a kind of conflicting Darius Garland performance to me. Yeah, conflicting is a good way to put it. And also that first assist that he got of the two assists didn't come until like midway in the third quarter off of Max Drew's three-pointer. So... Like, he could have been moving the rock or whatever, but, like, he wasn't actively looking to play within the flow of the offense or, you know, elevate his teammates like we kind of grown accustomed to. So, yeah, I think a weird Darius Garland game is a good way to put it. I think it's encouraging to see him be a little bit more selfish. I think that's something I've always wanted him to be. But, like, now it's like, okay, bro, you're a little too selfish shooting the basketball. Reel that back in a little bit and, like, maybe dose up the playmaking and you got something cooking there but hopefully this is a step forward again we'll see how he performs against the clippers especially if donovan mitchell doesn't play um and we'll just kind of monitor it overall like he's outside of 
maybe Jared Allen and George Niang and like the, the few minutes that like you got from Karis LeVert that were meaningful off the bench. Like Garland showed up at least with the pulse on offense. So I can't say that about the rest of the starters outside of Allen, but you know, like it at least gave them a puncher's chance. It's just, you know, a weird game is a good way to put it. Every, I just think this team is now just incapable of feeling normal or hopeful. That's what I said. Like, there's like these threads of like something really working out, and um, it, it can't connect to the other things that are working out. It's just like, it, all right, it's your turn to stand up and show out. And now, like, it, it's in, instead of it being like a bunch of role players doing it when the Cavs were so banged up, now it's more so. All right, let's ask the stars to do it, and it, it's not going to connect whatsoever to the rest of this team or anybody else. Yeah, and it just says something to me that like it says something when at this point in the year, and you know they know it's online. It just feels like something is this off, and I don't know exactly what the root of it is. I don't know if they even do, but it's it's very weird times. All right, after this, we're gonna just try to diagnose like who's actually at fault for how this season has gone. What are the root causes? We've talked so much about what has gone wrong. So what has caused it? We'll discuss that up next after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date in the latest on the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com backslash locked on Fire TV. So, Evan, I, I want to say something kind of... I think it's fair to, is what I'm about to say is the way I would put it. Some of what I think has gone wrong for Cleveland is just a product of injury. Like I do think that is fair to them in that like they couldn't have predicted Donovan Mitchell was going to have this injury. They couldn't have predicted that Darius Garland was going to break his jaw and have to carry a blender around Paris and lose 12 pounds, right? Like they couldn't have predicted or asked for Evan Mobley and Max Drews and Isaac Accord to have this toe injury and Dean Wade to, to be hurt. Although maybe the Dean Wade one you could have like predicted because that seems to just happen with him. That said, I, and giving them like the benefit of a doubt, this, the way this has gone, I think does demand some questioning of like what has actually happened here as, as best we can look at it. So injuries are part of this. Coaching is probably part of this. I think the play of the players is part of this as well. What to you is like the biggest driver of, of how the season feels like it has deteriorated and gone to the, the places ended up in. I mean, I think injuries have made this a bit of a lost season for the Cavs, but <sighs> At the same juncture, teams deal with injuries all the time, and they don't let it make or break their season. Some, some don't let it make or break their season, but like it felt like blow after blow after blow. And now that this team is at least you know cohesively healthy, like the, yeah, no Dean Wade and Isaac Okoro lately makes it a little harder to kind of say that. But your ideal starting five has been able to play together multiple games now. You're getting back Garland and Mitchell on. A bit of an abbreviated stint for Mitchell at times, but uh, reg- either either way, um, it's not perfect, but it just feels like the pieces are there, the components are there, and it just feels like it's still not cohesive. It feels like everything is still out of disarray. Like this team is playing together for the first time. Like like for comparison, like Kobe Altman when he blew up the entire roster, um, LeBron's last season, like. 
it feels like instead of LeBron being there to be the guy who's like the central conduit at all, like these are all guys that are just playing with each other for the first time every single game. And we all know that's not the case. Uh, Mitchell has a year under his belt at this point. Uh, Garland, Mobley, and Allen have played together for quite a bit. And like, yeah, Struz is the newest face in the starting five, or you can make an argument for Niang, but like Karis the Bird's comfortable too. And it just feels like, again, like it's just like an, I don't know what's really wrong with it. But like, yeah, I think injuries have just taken their toll and like robbed this Cavs team of finding cohesiveness. And now that there's a little less than, now less than five games to go in the regular season, like they're trying to force it when maybe like, they're just not going to be able to find it. This is what I, let me ask you this, just kind of a, a this is maybe a loaded question. I'm mostly just trying to, for us to talk through some of this. So I, I don't even mean this to like a, a push blame on someone or something. I'll take responsibility. It's okay. You don't have to ask. I'm sorry, guys. No, 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 no. I, you said, can, uh, like, I'm uh, I, no, no, like, here's the thing. Like, ultimately, like, I mean, like, break kayfabe for a second. Like, you will like look at your instagram th- and i just or sorry your twitter like mentions and like i just won't like you could people tweet it if you, people get mad at what we say tweet at me because i'm not gonna look i don't care like well i have it set up where i don't look and then i have friends who say like dude your mentions are on fire right now i'm like are they and i'm like ah uh, shouldn't yeah, shouldn't I, indulge this person i i had someone that'll say that to me and i say I guess i and i you know what i say i don't care because i don't care what don't my point here is this and the objective of being a podcaster or a media member who covers this team is it is completely within our rights to be critical and also just diagnose the situations and also like if we can say like we don't know that's just because we don't have the access and we've made that very clear like we don't know because we just don't have like that depth of access and even if we did like chris had noted like we also may just get from the same answer from the Cavs. is like i don't know yeah this is this is what i this is where my brain has gone the fact that it feels like this team has just lost all of its energy tells you something about wh- whether it's the guys in the locker room in the same way it told you something about them last year. Does it? I think it probably tells you, I think it certainly tells you that, you know, how they've talked so much about culture and building a culture in this organization that maybe the culture isn't as good as they've aspired it to be. It's not there yet. And secondly, is there something just with the coaching, with the front office? Like, is there someone in a leadership position that is not really right for them maximizing this job right like i look at i understand the injuries have mounted up in a bigger way but you look at like the accountability and the the drive in houston when sangoon goes down and they just adapt and and are hitting a run you don't see like the Cavs well doing any of that you know like it's, i know they're not a, yeah and then but then it's like okay now now they did in january yes a great point it's a great shout but now you're here yeah, and then like it's it, just gone yeah, like why where did that go like where did that go what happened i don't know but some like something to me speaks to me and saying like if that it can't it, it just this doesn't feel as simple as the pieces don't fit together like there's something in a human way that like this shouldn't be that way i understand if you want to argue the way they played in january was like simple and clean and it worked really well and maybe this is just like just in a large part mitchell's not right and he's their best player the most important player i get that something deeper just feels like off here and i i i would like to i don't there's just something with beyond just the mitchell stuff and whatever else and the other injuries that explain to him this just has to be i think yeah i i think the injuries are part of it i do wonder if Again, like we talked about Darius Garland just being inconsistent. Um, but like, what is going on? In da- like, what do you like? What is going through Darius's head? Like, what is like? What? What? Where? Where is he at? Like mentally within this team right now is like a bajillion dollar question. Like, I I don't know the answer to it. You know, and we never will. But it's like, we do we even know? Like, what is like? There's so many guys I could ask that same question to too. Yeah, and I just. I don't think there's going to be guys who are brutally honest or like, you know, sarcastic for the sake of a quote or wit or whatever, but it's just, it's hard. It's really hard to diagnose or do like an autopsy on this Cavs team because they're not dead yet, but by golly, um, this season is starting to feel like it's on life support and they are trying their best to get a second wind 
with literally four games to go in the regular season. Would you let me let just that? Yeah, we'll say we'll save this for later. There's more to come. We're we're uh, about out of time here. I I think would you I would you agree with this statement that wherever this is going, whatever the cause is, it feels like it's going to a place that's going to leave this team and I think the fan base and and whomever anyone else with an emotional attachment to people in the locker room, friends, family, whatever, it's going to leave. It's more likely an end disappointment than it is like some sense of accomplishment. Is that is that fair to you? I think it's fair. And if this season ends similarly or as catastrophically as it did last year, the wholesale change has to come. You cannot rest on your laurels of regular season success when you're healthy for the second year in a row. Like this season is a disappointment because again, they are too talented to be playing this poorly. Injuries are not. We're gonna end there. I'm the guy who just yawned really noticeably Chris Manning. That's Evan Damrell. We'll be back. I'll be back on Sunday to cover Cavs Clippers. Evan will be back this week, and we'll be getting towards the end of the regular season all this week on Lockdown Cavs. Until next time, enjoy the hoops. We'll talk to you soon.